In the grand tapestry of royalty and nobility, there exists a hierarchy woven with threads of power, prestige, and tradition. At the zenith of this hierarchy stands the king, a figure of majestic authority and sovereign unmatched by any other. The king, adorned in regal robes and crowned with the weight of centuries of history, commands the reverence of all who behold him. His word is law, his will absolute, and his presence casts a radiant aura of the majesty that eclipses all else. Beneath the king lies the prince. No, not that prince. A noble scion born of royal blood and groomed for greatness. Clad in garments befitting his station, the prince carries himself with an air of noble grace and refinement. Though he may not wield the full authority of his father the king, the prince commands respect and admiration as a symbol of royal lineage and potential. He is the heir to the throne, destined to ascend to the pinnacle of power and carry forward the legacy of his forebearers. And then, amidst the labyrinth corridors of the aristocracy, there exists the Earl, a title imbued with a unique blend of authority, privilege, and responsibility. The Earl, resplendent in his noble attire and adorned with the insignia of his rank, is a pillar of his community, a guardian of the realm entrusted with the stewardship of his lands and people. While he may not possess the regal aura of the king or the inherent prestige of the prince, the Earl commands the respect and loyalty of his subjects through his wisdom, integrity, and unwavering dedication to duty. The MWW7081 movement used in the Earl is a marvel of precision engineering, a heartbeat that powers the passage of time with unwavering accuracy and reliability. It's crafted with meticulous attention to detail and uncompromising craftsmanship. The gunmetal two-tone movement represents the culmination of centuries of horological expertise distilled into a compact, elegant mechanism built, regulated, and designed right here in the USA. Alligator leather is often considered a superior choice for watch straps, and the Earl spared no expense in this beautiful alligator strap. Alligator leather stands out as a superior choice for watch straps due to its luxury, durability, comfort, exclusivity, and versatility. The Earl, adorned with this beautiful alligator strap, not only exudes elegance, but also reflects the discerning taste and appreciation for the quality craftsmanship of this watch. 
What a bold and excellent, superior choice it was using sterling silver for the watch case material. Several reasons for that. Its elegance and prestige, its durability and longevity, the craftsmanship and detail, the rarity and exclusivity of using a precious metal. In summary, sterling silver is a superior choice for a luxury timepiece such as this due to its elegance, durability, craftsmanship, rarity, and timeless appeal. A watch made from sterling silver is not only a symbol of luxury, but also a testament to impeccable taste and the discerning eye of its wearer. With a case width of 39 millimeters, a lug width of 20 millimeters, a 46 millimeter lug to lug, and that double domed sapphire crystal giving this watch a total height of 14.3 millimeters, this watch is very wearable for many wrist sizes, and it has a unique clasp designed to give you precise and exact fit for any occasion. So let's talk a little bit more about this, my closing thoughts. First of all, this is a $2,000 watch, which you may look at this watch and think, man, that is a lot to ask for a watch. But let me say this, this watch, I believe, has all of the elements to justify a $2,000 price point. It has the alligator strap, which I am a big fan of. It's breathable, it's light, and I have other alligator straps in my collection, and they are my preference. If I wear a watch with a strap, those are generally the ones I go for. So just look up how expensive a low-end alligator strap is. With that said, this buckle system, while I get what Eugene is going for here in terms of its adjustability, my concern is the damage that it could do to this expensive strap by adjusting it just a few times. You can see it here, okay? so. I had the opportunity to have a really good, actually two very good conversations with Eugene and I recorded both of them and intended to build this video around that. And unfortunately the audio just didn't come out. So I can share with you some of the aspects of our conversation. So he wanted this adjustability and it is unusual. It's a very different way to wear a watch strap and you kind of tuck it through here and it makes it a like a push-pull feeding system that I think is very interesting and does allow you to get some micro adjustability that a buckle and hang just doesn't give you. But therein lies my concern right there. So, um, so with that being said, high quality. I think that this watch justi does justify a $2,000 price tag. So another reason, why I think it justifies a $2,000 price tag is because of the case material being sterling silver. And not only that, it does have a rhodium plating to it. Rhodium is going to give it a strength and it's going to keep it from tarnishing. Now, uh, and that's the thing, sterling silver does tarnish, but it has a radically different color than stainless steel, as you can see, even in my watch, just the, the brushing looks so different. And actually I, can, I could show it to you in a coin, in a uh, silver coin that I have right here as well. You see that silver, it's just a different kind of metal. It's easier to work with. And when I talked to Eugene about this, he said that, and I agree, silver is, it has a different feel, a different weight, a different look and it's easier to repair should you break off the lugs 
on now is that likely no but it, back in the day uh sterling silver watch cases might have just had a wire to hold the the um nato style strap on this does not so so that i i think on that basis you can justify two thousand dollars i um i think that the movement justifies a two thousand dollar now it is a uh, i believe it's a um Maryland Watchworks is the company that Eugene is the head watchmaker for. And Eugene, when you see this video, if I said that wrong, please leave a comment and correct me and I will make sure to add that to the description. But um, being a, a, an in-house watch kit, I should say, it's a kit that's put together and decorated custom for this watch. Now, the, the, the mother of pearl dial. I believe helps to justify this and the functionality and having a day date window helps to justify the price of this watch now um the bluing is not heat blued it is chemically blued um as as are the indexes so i think that a two thousand dollar price point is justified for this for this watch i believe the value is there the only thing this watch doesn't have is name recognition. I believe if Longines or Tudor put this watch out, people would talk about what a bargain this watch is at $2,000. So with that being said, let me talk a little bit about some of the things that I find difficult with this watch. And this watch is available in many color choices. If I had been given the choice of which watch would you like to see, I probably would have chosen the chocolate dial because that is very much my taste. Why I'm glad I got this is because it, it allows me to look at it through an unbiased lens, right? Um, so one thing is that the, the, the minute markers, the minute markers really bother me. Um, once you see them, you can't unsee them. And I think when you combine that with the stark blue of the indexes, the hands, and the color that comes through Mother of Pearl, it's a bit much for a watch of this caliber. What would I have changed? What would I have changed if this was, um, if, if Len was the head designer at the E. Stolman Watch Company? I would have made an enamel dial which probably would have driven the cost up because enamel has a very high failure rate. I would have had black indexes and uh, on the minute markers, black uh, minute markers, not indexes, I probably would have made the indexes um, sterling silver or silver plate um, to have them complement the case rather than the hands. Now, that being said, it's a very readable watch. It's a very readable watch. Um, I mentioned the buckle system that I would certainly change. I would probably go back to a regular buckle and tang and just leave the uh, leave well enough alone because that's really what people are used to. Now, with that being said, I get as a new watch brand in a very crowded space, you're trying to stand out. And I think that that, that is done. Um, the Having the logo on... Your crown is a nice touch and it's big. The crown is a nice big. In fact, the watch has stopped now because I haven't worn it in a couple of days. So the, the crown is very grabbable. It does hack. So, and it's like the big onion style, which is nice. This watch draws inspiration, in my opinion, one from Rolex, as you'll see on the inside of the domed, double dome sapphire, you can see the E. Stolman etched on the inside of the case, very similar to how Rolex does. I'm gonna see if I can get a focus on that. Might be a bit of a challenge. There we go. So if you look right inside the watch case, you will see that around those inner edges. Very cool. Little, I don't know if that's Rolex inspired per se, but Rolex certainly does have that practice. The watch case shape itself with the teardrop lugs Reminds me of the Vacheron Constantine, or Vacheron Constantin, however you say it, the Easterique triple calendar with those teardrop lugs. So it has a very premium look to it without being a clomage or an homage to anything else. 
Now, what else would I have done here? Let's take a look at the movement and talk just a minute about that. I love the um, the two color bimetal kind of look of the gunmetal with the brass um, or bronze look to the wheels, the rotor, and the mechanisms. With that being said, it's not befitting of a watch like this. This is something you would see on the backside of a sports watch, um, in my opinion. Now, what could you do to change that? Well, think of antique guns and the etching on antique guns on the gunmetal, where you might put some etching and then fill it in and give it a more premium look. So, and finally, my biggest, the biggest thing that I can't get around on this is the mother of pearl. This is a purely personal point of contention. There, the mother of pearl is just a material that I do not like personally. Um, I think that mother of pearl is something that is used when you want something that is inexpensive to look premium. So again, if this dial was enamel, um, even with painted indexes, I would have had a greater, much greater appreciation for it. For me, I look at Mother of Pearl and this is what I think of. I think of an inexpensive watch that's trying to look expensive. Now, I am in no way comparing the E. Stolman Earl to this because let's face it, this Mother of Pearl, it's subtle. And, um, but it's still there. I notice it and it's because and because it's a material I don't particularly care for it's something that would probably keep me from buying this watch at least in this color so with that being said um, Eugene did disclose to me that um, that he does have a new release coming out a new color coming out in this watch and he I believe he called it a tobacco leaf dial so that will be very exciting and it'll be a very, very limited run. So is this watch worth $2,000 materially? Yes, I believe that all the materials in this watch, it has all the elements of a $2,000 watch. Does that mean people are going to be willing to separate with $2,000 in, in exchange for this watch? I don't know. I personally, for this watch and this color would not. Had I been sent the, uh, had I been sent the chocolate one, which I'll just put a picture of it here. And of course, there's a link to the website in the description that might be a completely different story. But that, are, that is what I think of the E. Stolman Earl. What do you think? What do you think? How did Eugene do? I love it. I do. Even with all of its flaws, and even though I probably wouldn't personally separate with my money for this, if there were some minor changes to it, he might be able to extract some dough out of me. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, I hope that today is the day I've earned your subscription. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.